Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks, and in this video we're gonna go over how to check and adjust the action and the intonation on your guitar. So the action is how far off the fretboard the strings are, and then the intonation is whether or not the guitar is in tune all over the neck. And these are the two basic elements of a setup, and most of it could be done at home. If something is really bad, that's when you wanna bring it to a professional, but I'll show you how to determine if that's what you have to do. Before we get into the lesson, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks, and if you wanna be notified when every new video is released, please also click the bell. All right, so here is my Fender Blacktop Jazzmaster with a bunch of mods, and the action right now is a little too high for my liking. Now we could actually check exactly how high it is using something like this. This is a, a setup gauge, and this one is called the Fret Guru. This will also let you know how big your frets are. It's got a fret measurement tool to see if you have jumbo, medium. It'll tell you exactly how big they are. So I'm gonna use the string action guide, and I'm gonna line up this bottom line with the bottom of my string to see exactly how high it is. So mine on the 12th fret is about 0 0.055 inches. And then on the back, it lets me know that to millimeters. So that's something you could use as a reference. And then if you find out exactly how much you like, if you ever go to get it professionally set up, you can let them know the exact number that feels comfortable for you. So I want to get it down lower than that. But the thing is, I want to get it lower without it buzzing. So that is going to be our main limitation. How low can I get it without it buzzing? And I'm going to show you some of the challenges you might run into trying to get low action without buzzing. So the first thing I'm going to do before I adjust the bridge is see what my neck relief is. Relief means that it bows this way, right? And then concave would be like that. We definitely want to avoid concave. A lot of people aim to have it perfectly level. So here's the first thing I'm gonna to do to check the relief, and this is something that anybody can do. I could either, if I don't have a capo, just put one finger on the first fret, hold that down, put another finger where the neck meets the body, so up on like the 20th fret, and then I'm going to see if there's any space in the middle between the string and the fret. Okay, now that is hard to do, so I'm gonna use a capo to help me out. So put the capo on the first fret, and then now I can hold down that higher fret up on about 19, and then see if I have any space. I have a little space, so it's definitely not concave. There's a little bit of relief, and it's not perfectly straight either. How big is that space? Can I fit a guitar pick? No. The guitar pick would make it raise up. So let me check it with a business card. So here I've got a business card. I'd say it's exactly the width of a business card. So what that tells me, and what I'm gonna do with this information, is that I have a very, very slight neck relief, right? The fact that it raises a little means there's some relief, but it's very slight. Now another tool you can use to check how straight the neck is, is uh, I think it's called like a fretboard level. And all you do is you put it like this over the frets and then you turn it around and you look to see if you have space. This I got on Amazon. Now if it rocks in any way, then you know your neck is concave. It shouldn't be rocking at all. Yeah, so I, I could see space. I could see underneath in the middle there. I can just see a little bit, but my neck has very little relief. So to me, that's actually seems pretty ideal. Now, if I was able to fit a bunch of business cards or a couple picks, then I know I have dramatic neck relief and that's gonna cause high action because as the neck comes up, then the strings are gonna be high, but when the neck's flat, they're gonna be low, right? So that's not my issue. Now, if I did have a lot of neck relief, I would do a minor adjustment on my own. It would be safe to do and I would tighten the truss rod. And for me, I would have to take my neck off and I could adjust the truss rod there. A lot of guitars have the adjustment right there. And what you wanna do is righty tighty, lefty loosey. So if I had a lot of relief, 
I would do righty tighty and I would just do a quarter turn, just one quarter. I was told to not do more than a quarter turn. If you're doing it at home, you can mess up the neck. If you do too much at once, the neck can't adjust in time. It's a piece of wood, so it needs time to adjust. So just one quarter turn at a time, check it again, but you have to be patient and just do a little at a time. If I wanted to add more relief, then I would turn to the left, lefty Lucy. So being I know that my neck relief is not the problem, now I'm gonna look at the bridge. So the bridge, on electric guitars, you could either raise the entire bridge on some guitars with these two screws. A lot of guitars will have two master height adjustments. And then most guitars will have adjustable saddles for each individual string so that you could set the radius because the neck has a little bit of a curvature. And so you want your strings to follow some of that curvature. So anyway, what I'm gonna start with, I like the way that I have my radius set already. So I'm gonna find the right Allen key and I'm gonna just adjust the bridge on both sides. So I've got my right sized Allen key here. If your guitar didn't come with one, you might wanna just get a set of small Allen keys or just look up online which ones your bridge uses. All right, so now I'm gonna loosen this screw so that the bridge drops down and I'm gonna to try to do it the same amount of turns on both sides. You wanna go little by little. So let me see how that looks. Did I do it evenly? So now I'm gonna just check with my eye to see if I did it evenly. Now some people like having higher action on the low strings because they're not soloing as much on those strings and a little lower here. So those are things you could experiment with using the saddles. Like if you're getting buzz on one string, just raise that one string just a little bit. No need to raise the whole bridge. Whoa, so now I'm between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 inches. So that's pretty significant amount that I lowered it. So now I'm gonna see if it buzzes. Buzzy up there. So it's a little buzzy, and you might wanna check for buzzing without your amp. It's easier to hear it. Like that's very clear, that's some buzz. The other thing is, if you play harder, you have to have higher action because the string vibrates a lot and it'll hit the frets. If you play very soft, you could have lower action. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're playing really hard, no matter how good your setup, you're gonna get buzz. If you play very soft, you can get it super low. I play kind of in between. Now I notice I have a lot of buzz up high on the fretboard. Now I notice some particular buzzing on the G string. So what I'm gonna do is just adjust the G string right here. So being I had a little bit more buzzing than I wanted around the whole guitar, I'm just gonna go a quarter turn higher on both sides. And then if I wanted, I could recheck and just find where is the perfect point. All right, so what this all points to, the fact that I can't get super low action without buzzing is that I have fret work issues. And I'm guessing they're mo mostly around here because that's where I'm getting most of the buzzing. And here's how I can check for that. I take a straight edge, I put it over three frets, and I see if I could rock the straight edge. You hear that? It's rocking. That means this middle fret is higher than these two. They're not an equal height. Let me try over, over these three, right? And I could go around and inspect. You wanna find groups of three frets. These are good. You just go one fret at a time. Hear that? That's a clear rock. That's rocking. So this is a high fret right here. Rocking. Let's see. Rocking, not rocking, not rocking. Whoa, oh, <laughs> and then I go this way. I'm gonna make it long ways as I get to the lower frets.
Good. Yeah, so I could repeat the process. There seem to be a lot of issues around this area. Now, another thing that could cause issues is if your frets are old and they have divots in them, you know, sometimes you have a lot of divots down here, which makes all these frets really high compared to these. It's very rare that your frets would wear out at the same rate unless you were always playing equally everywhere on the neck. So then what a professional would do is they would use something like this. This is called the Fret Guru. I bought it, haven't used it yet. Maybe I'll do it one day. And it's just a super level piece of steel. And they put sandpaper on it and they go across your whole fretboard and they level it out until it's perfectly level. And then they recrown each fret individually. So that could run you a couple hundred dollars but that will allow you to get your string super low and your action just perfect. So it's all about how low can you get it on your own by adjusting the bridge, maybe a little neck relief, and then if you can't get it that low, that's when you wanna bring it to a pro. Other thing I didn't mention is the nut, right? So sometimes the strings are too high off the nut, which will also prevent you from getting really low action. But the issue is if you try to cut your own nut, and you don't do it right, you kind of have to get a new nut. So if you have an issue with a nut, that's something you might want to bring to a pro too. You can't adjust the nut once you, you cut it. And you also want to cut it the right way so that the strings don't get caught in the nut, which is one of the biggest uh, reasons why guitars go out of tune is when the strings get caught in the nut. All right, now that brings us to intonation. As you can see, these saddles are not in a straight line. That's because the length of the string has to vary just a little bit. In general, we're 25 and a half inches from here to here. But 25.55, 25.49, it's not exactly perfect on each string. And every guitar is a little different. Every set of strings is a little different. That's why it also pays to have the same strings that you use over and over. If you detune your guitar, it's gonna be different. You have to set your intonation again. Like if I was regularly tuning an E flat, I might have intonation issues. So it's something you wanna adjust and it's also something that could seasonally, things could change. So you wanna keep your eye on that. Here's how you set the intonation. All right, so the way we're gonna check the intonation, the 12th fret is the octave of the guitar. So the open string, E is also on the 12th fret, one octave higher. So we use the 12th fret to see if our octaves match or if this one is flat or sharp when this one is in tune. So for instance, here's my E, perfectly in tune. When I play it on the 12th fret, also in tune. See that, it's still green. The way to really hear it though is to play the harmonic right above the 12th fret and then the fretted note. See, in that case, you could hear the fretted note is just a little bit sharper. Even though my tuner says they're the same, my ear hears it a little bit sharper. So being it is a little bit sharper, this is the rule. If it's sharp, you want it to go away. <laughs> Right? You don't want something sharp near you. You want it to go away from the fretboard that way. If the 12th fret is flat, then you want to move the saddle closer. So that means I'm going to tighten this just a hair. That means I'm going to use a Phillips head to tighten this screw so that the saddle moves a little bit away. Just a tiny bit, just like a quarter turn. And then let's try again. Good, happy with that. Next one, harmonic. If you're able to play it, it says I'm in tune, open. It says I'm in tune. And now the fretted note, it's a little sharp. Being it sharp, like I said, we need it to go away. So I'm going to take the screwdriver, tighten the screw. It 
about a full turn maybe. And then try it again. Much better. Next one. In tune, way sharp. That one's way sharp. Right? So that guy has to come in further. All right, so that's the process, and you would repeat that on all the strings. And like I said, if you change your string gauge, right now I have Ernie Ball 10 to 46. If I went to 11s or 9s, that could affect the intonation. If I tune to E flat, that could affect the intonation. But here's the rule again in a nutshell. Use the harmonic or the open string. The harmonic you're gonna hear most clearly as compared to the fretted note. And they should match. First get the guitar in tune. If the 12th fret is flat, then you wanna move the saddle closer this way to the fretboard. If the fretted note is sharp, you wanna move it further away. And that's all there is to adjusting intonation. And then again, for action, you could either move the entire bridge up and down or each individual saddle. Now for me, I like my saddles high because on this particular guitar with the tremolo, if they're too low, I get two friction points. And I like to only have one friction point with the tremolo just to keep from having tuning issues. Also, sometimes if the saddles are too low, the screws come out, which could be annoying on the hand. So it's all about finding your own sweet spot, but the, you, you know, you have two ways to adjust the up and down. All right, everybody, I hope that gave you some insight into how you can check your intonation and your action and diagnose what the problem is on your own. And then if you determine that it's fret work that needs to be done, which I have to get done on my guitar, I bought the tools, but for me to do it on my own and learn how to use them correctly would be a huge project. And I think this time around, I'm gonna bring it to a professional, spend a couple hundred dollars. This is my main electric guitar. If I have to do that every couple of years to make sure it plays exactly how I want it to play, that's okay with me. But that's for fret work. A basic setup could be anywhere from 35 to $75. Once you get into the realm of fret work, you know, then it could get in the one to 200 for some basic fret work. And then, like I said, if some of your frets are really worn out and you need a refret, then you might be spending 250 to 450, somewhere in that range, depending on who you hire for the job. But you definitely wanna hire someone that really knows what they're doing if it's your baby. The great thing with Fender guitars is you could put on replacement necks. So for instance, this neck is an aftermarket neck and if I got to the point where I needed a full refret, I would probably sell the neck and get a new one with the same dimensions with brand new frets. You know, that's always an option as well. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you wanna see more lessons on how to play guitar and everything guitar related, head over to guitartricks.com. If you wanna see more lessons like this, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson. Happy playing.